You're watching Vancouver TV, where we show you what's happening in your city. We've got the latest movie reviews and access to your favorite celebs. From fashion to red carpets, live shows, and more, we cover it all, keeping you informed about your city and in the know about upcoming events. Everywhere I go, I see his face. I just really miss him. Yeah, I miss him too. I don't think Tony would have done what he did if he didn't know that you were going to be here after he was gone. You going to be the next Iron Man now? Well, no, I don't have time. I'm too busy doing your job. What? Oh, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Look, keep up the good work. Because I am going on vacation. Heads up. Nick Fury's calling you. I don't really want to talk to Nick Answer Fury. The phone. Why? Because if you don't talk to him, then I have to talk to him. I don't want to talk to him. You sent Nick Fury to voicemail? I gotta go. You do not ghost Nick Fury. What up, dorks? What's up? We're just talking about the trip. I'm here in St. Marco Polo's. Oh, I think MJ really likes me. That reminds me when I first fell in love. You're a very difficult person to contact, Spider-Man. This is Mr. Beck. We could've used someone like you on my world. Your world? Beck is from Earth, just not ours. The snap to our hole in our dimension. You're saying there's a multiverse? We have a job to do, and you're coming with us. There's gotta be someone else you can use. What about Thor? Off-world. Captain Marvel. Unavailable. But I'm just a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Please, you've been to space. What do you want, Peter? I want to go back on my trip with the girl who I really like and tell her how I feel. MJ, I am Spider-Man. No, of course I'm not. I mean, it's kind of obvious. You're right, you may not be ready, but this is my responsibility. Saving the world requires sacrifice. Sometimes people die. Oh my God. I just always feel like I'm putting my friends in danger. The world needs the next Iron Man. Are you going to step up or not? I gotta get you guys out of here! Get on the jet! Who are you? I work with Spider-Man. You work for Spider-Man? I work with Spider-Man, not for Spider-Man. New plan! To win tickets to see this movie and other fun movie price packs, visit www.vancouvertelevision.ca. Hello and welcome to the segment for Sheila Fajardo Sherman and Clarence Canada. I'm so excited to be here to introduce our new makeup collection. We have some fantastic eyeshadows in three different formulas. We have velvet, we have satin, and we have a sparkly shades as well. We have our new waterproof eyeliners that are not only waterproof, but they also have a, a built-in pencil sharpener. And I am so excited to introduce our new collection of cushion foundations. So much anticipated, and I'm so excited to um, introduce them to our market. Um, you're gonna love the shades and really soft and smooth and buildable colors for you as well. And my favorite of all is our new 4D mascara, our Wonder Perfect mascara that lengthens, curls, and volumizes your lashes naturally. So you're gonna see your lashes looking more selfie ready than ever. So I can't wait to show you in store, so come on by and we will show you our new collection. Hey there, Vancouver Television viewers. I'm your host, Pega Ahani. Thank you so much for joining us on another episode of Vancouver Television. Today, we are going to be having an exclusive interview with the show chair of the Created Jewelers Guild, and she's gonna be showing us all of those beautiful pieces of jewelry that are handcrafted by the Creative uh, Jewelers Guild, and uh, a show that's coming up December 8th at Van Dusen Gardens, so stay tuned. We have a lot of information information to give you about where you need to be on December 8th. So guys, last year's event was a great success, right Mary? Yes, it was fabulous. It was our fifth 
Mother's Day show that we've done here at Van Dusen Gardens BMO Great Hall. Yeah, a lot, a lot of uh, mothers and daughters were there, um, and a lot of people that were at Van Dusen Gardens just you know, there to see the gardens were, were kind of coming in and checking out everything. Yeah, we've had, being our fifth year, we've actually started to get a lot of people come back and uh, recognize us that we're there again. So it's gaining in popularity. It seems every year we have more and more people coming in uh, and into our show and knowing that we're there. So we're just going to keep on going. And is there, uh, are there new members this year that have joined the Guild? Um, we have a pretty, pretty steady membership. Uh, we get new members every time we put on a show, it seems. So, uh, which was also another one of the reasons we decided to add the holiday show as well. So that's why we're doing this one coming up on December 8th in the Floral Hall at Van Dusen Gardens. Okay, so um, what can we expect at this, uh, at this event that's a little bit different than last year? Well, for the holiday show, there's going to be more vendors even. Uh, I think we've got over 20 vendors this year. We're going to be enjoying a lot of the lights that will be going on here at Van Dusen Gardens. So there'll be a lot of uh, holiday themed twinkle twinkle going on. It'll be a lot of fun. Um, I think uh, being a holiday show, you get to see a lot more of people's creativity because people tend to make a lot of things that are, are significant to the holidays, um, trying to reach out to people who are looking to, to shop for, you know, things for their family and loved ones. Especially unique things like that. People are starting to steer towards getting things that are a little bit more unique, a little bit different, not mass produced. Um, and I mean, we are all connoisseurs of art here in Vancouver. So, of course, we like to be mesmerized by jewelry, especially at, at Christmas time. You said twinkle, twinkle. It's going to be at the Van Dusen Gardens. It's really magical. But then there also so is uh, the jewelry that you're going to find there. I know because... I did make some purchases at the Mother's Day show. Not all for my mother. <laughs> I, I did get her something, but not all for her. I had some pieces I had to take home um, and made friends there with all of the guild members. So you guys are so much fun. I love hanging out with you. I was there for longer than I had planned. So you guys have to come out on December the 8th um, and come with, you know, those shopping lists, those, uh, Christmas lists, right, Mary? Well, as I always say, jewelry is a matter of, uh, not always a matter of need, but, you know, a matter of want. And um, a lot of the things that the people that we have coming to our show as vendors, we, we put them through quite a process to jury them. So we're always looking for people who um, are, do very unique things. Um, everything's handmade. Um, there's a long process and um, a lot of inspiration that goes into everything that's made by the vendors at our show is we try to make sure that everybody is um, makers of unique one-of-a-kind pieces. So um, with a lot of the, um, the things that they're going to be showcasing the guild members at the event, it's not just jewelry, right? There's, there's a different artisanal pieces that they're going to be bringing with them as well, right? Yes, that's correct. So some people, uh, yes, the jewelry is our main love, but we also, um, a lot of us enjoy making other things like ornaments and um, decor pieces for the home. There are some people who do uh, garden art, that sort of thing. So it's really um, more a matter of art than specifically art jewelry. So um, just for our viewers that don't know Mary, why Van Dusen Gardens? I mean, why not? But why specifically was this an option to showcase uh, all of this art? Well, in the beginning, when we first talked uh, about doing a Mother's Day show, the, one of the things that came to our mind was, um, what do a lot of people do on Mother's Day? Where do they take their mothers? And we thought, you know, Van Dusen Gardens, it's beautiful at Mother's Day. You've got the spring flowers, you've got um, lots and lots of people coming in. So we thought that uh, it would be a perfect venue. And the first year we did it, everything went great. Everybody loved it. And so we just kept on doing it over and over and over again. And then deciding to do the holiday show, Van Dusen is also a wonderful place during the holiday time with all the lights and the, you know, the special things that they do during the holidays. So we thought, well, let's keep it going here. Yeah. So, and, and you guys have obviously like over the years you've grown and uh, you, you built this amazing uh, organization. What are some of the challenges you guys went through um, getting it together and kind of having the venue to, to showcase it? Um, 
you know, a lot of it has to do with um, our membership. This this guild has been going on a long time, since the 50s. It was started in the 50s. So um, a lot of it is based on people sharing ideas and sharing knowledge and sharing skills. So the group itself depends a lot on that. Um, we do bring in outside people from time to time to help teach us things and, and show us new things. But a lot of it is dependent on the membership giving of their own time and sharing of their own skills. Yeah, so it's a lot of like community involvement and, and people, like you said, sharing their ideas and sharing their passions, which is, I think, the best reason for people to come together and create together. And I mean, when the result is this beautiful, <laughs> you're really doing <laughs> your community a, a grand gesture. <laughs> so thank you so much. And how? what about you as the show chair? What kind of responsibilities does that entail? Uh, so mostly just as show chair, I kind of need to be um, able to get together a group of people that can assist me with getting this show to happen. Um, we all have duties that we do. I do a lot of the receiving the uh, vendors' applications, submitting them to the jurying panel, um, being in contact with the vendors as well if they have questions or concerns. Um, that's my role. Everybody else has their own roles when it comes to um, making this whole thing work. So it takes all of us to come together um, to make it happen. It's it's a fair bit of work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's I'm well sure worth it, is. it. It's well worth it in the end. Brings together a bunch of really interesting people. Definitely, yeah. I can see that. And so if one of our viewers is watching and they they think this is a genius idea and they want to join the guild, what do, what do they have to do to to get in <laughs> well you know normally we, <laughs> normally we just say come to a meeting we have meetings on the third Sundays of every month we're based out of the Richmond Cultural Center uh, we have a meeting room upstairs there um, people can come and see what our meetings are all about and come and meet some of us we have show and tells during the meeting we talk about what's coming in future what we need to do to um, get programs going and get workshops going and that sort of thing so it's very um, the goal is to get information and, and wants and needs from everybody uh, as a part of a group so that everybody's voices can be heard. Let's get down to business, Mary. I want to see some of these samples of the beautiful art that you create. Um, one of them I happen to be wearing. <laughs> So I love this. This is beautiful. Can you tell our viewers about, you know, some of the materials you use to make this, how long it takes to make something like this and where you got the inspiration? Basically, when I'm making pieces, the, the materials that I use are either wire, so metal wire being either sterling silver, rose gold filled, yellow gold filled, sometimes copper. Or I use sheet metal as well, so sheets of sterling silver, etc. This one here is made with rose gold and sterling silver wire. And so basically it's just spools of wire, um, making my shapes however I want it to look, soldering them all together. Then I use special hammers, they're called texturing hammers. And so you hammer the pieces to give them, make them look almost like they're faceted. So you hammer them so that way they pick up sparkle and light and that sort of thing. And you can, there's so many different textures you can use and I've got lots of examples here as well um, of different ways of making jewelry. The textures on it that give mm -hmm. it that edge. A little bit yeah. of sparkle, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't do any casting of jewelry myself, so the kind of jewelry that you would see in a jewelry store, I don't do any of that. All my stuff is done by hand. Other people do it other ways as well. And there's lots of methods I've never tried that I'd love to try. So always learning, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Discovering your yeah. way of channeling, you know, your creativity. And, and you, yeah. some people love working with their hands like you. Yeah. That's right. And being brave enough to try something new. So, I, I mean, a piece like this is really elegant and simple, but it has that edge, that, that sparkle that you want. Um, it's two different types of... Um, 
material yes. and it's two different types of light reflecting yes. so I think this would be a great piece that you can dress up and down exactly and it's a nice one to give to someone that you don't specifically know if they like stones or beads or you know things that are too sparkly this is this would be a nice neutral piece to yes. kind of give to someone that would match a lot of things and a lot of my pieces that I make that are longer like that I try to make them versatile so the reason for the larger um, links in the chain is so that you could actually hook it up shorter and wear it shorter and have oh. the piece of chain hanging down your back if you were wearing an open backed dress or something like that. Oh wow, that's yeah. That is so to brilliant. give it more versatility, even yeah. brilliant. You are just okay. I'm sold. Um, so yeah, thank you for telling, uh, sharing with us how you created this uh, beautiful piece. And you know, I'm excited to show our viewers the rest of these samples that are going to be there also yes. December 8th. So the, uh, when I'm making jewelry, I use a lot of different types of metals. I started out originally using uh, sterling silver, and then uh, I like the contrast a lot, so I started using copper. And that can be seen um, in a pair like this. So this is copper. And the way these are done is I use a jeweler's saw and I saw these out of a sheet of copper. And then I take uh, a texturing hammer and I hammer in, you can see all the little divots in them. I hammer in the texture to them. And then I use a technique called dapping. And da what dapping is, is uh, it's a metal block that's got like bowls carved out of it. And then you put them into the dapping block and then you hammer them down with a round dapper. So dapping can be used on a lot of different things. These little rose gold ones here are also dapped. And you can see there's some texturing on there as well. Those were done with texturing stamps. So you use the stamp and then you hammer the stamp and it makes the little textures. These ones are dapped inward like a bowl and these ones are dapped outward. So two different ways of dapping. There's lots of different uh, things you can do with dapping. Sterling silver wire and copper wire also. A lot of hammering has gone into these as well. You can see there's different hammering. You can see the little straight lines on the copper and then the diamond hammering on there. This piece here is also copper and sterling silver. And this was basically done with um, these little circles. They're all called jump rings. And so I put together a whole bunch of jump rings just in a pattern that I thought looked pretty cool and then added some little silver balls there. These here are, are also made with sterling silver wire. They are textured but much more lightly as you can see they're not quite as sparkly as the others and they're just made into that eye shaped and then twisted with some pliers so that they, they give that twist to them. In the beginning I started out doing a lot of uh, stone work, it's called lapidary work. So this piece here, I cut this stone, uh, it's called, um, it's a semi-facet with a rough face. So this face of the stone here, I did not do anything to. That was the natural face of the stone. And then as you can see on the sides, it's nice and shiny there. So that was a stone I cut myself and then um, set it into the sterling silver setting. Uh, metal, whichever I choose to use, this was sterling silver. And I draw out the pattern onto the sterling silver and I use a very fine jeweler saw to cut out the pattern. And so you can, um, you can saw out anything you like with a jeweler saw. There's many different things you can do with it. Also, that was lightly textured as well with a small aventurine stone in there, which I cut. So when I talk about piercing as well, these items over here, the uh, Christmas ornaments and this lantern here, all of this work here is also called piercing. And it's done, just as I said, with a very fine jeweler's saw. These are all done the same way, um, except for this one, which is wire. With a hammer and uh, a jeweler's tool called a sinusoidal stake. And it looks a lot like a snake, that's a metal snake. And what you do is you take your piece of copper and you hold it sideways on the stake and you hammer it. And it, as you hammer, it starts to turn. So you just keep going and hammering and hammering and hammering until you've made this little corkscrew. And when I use copper for all these ornaments and my lanterns and everything, this copper comes um, from the recycling depots. It's actually roofing copper. So stuff that's left over when roofers are uh, doing their work with copper roofs. Um, you can also see that there is um, 
designs etched onto this as well. That is done um, with a salt water method and it's done using um, a battery charger and uh, a positive and a negative and some fully salinated water and uh, you put your design on there and put it in and put the charge through it and it starts taking away copper and that's what it leaves. The stones that you see in the side here, um, actually my husband, what he does is he slabs the stones for me and polishes them for me as well and then he makes the bases as well for these lamps. And then each panel is basically sewn together as you can see down the sides with copper wire. So those are basically the methods that I use um, in a lot of my jewelry making. Uh, there are endless other methods uh, that can be used um, and Dixie will show you some of the methods that she uses. So as Mary said, all sorts of different methods. She talked about piercing, cutting with a saw. So this piece, I started with a piece of copper and I cut that shape out, started with a piece of silver and reticulated it. And that is a process where you keep heating the silver again and again and again and again until finally you get a, a layer of very fine silver on top and then you nearly melt it. And it makes these like flowing. It looks to me like the way sand is when the tide's gone out across it. You get these ripples and things. And then to color the copper, you cook it. You take a pot of um, material from trees, like pine cones and cedar sprigs and so on, dry. And you heat the metal red hot. You drop it into that pot full of vegetative material, put the lid on, and let it cook for about hmm, one to three minutes and you never know what color pattern you'll get. It's fascinating. This one came up mostly with, with red and some yellow and a tiny bit of greenish. Sometimes it'll come up quite green, sometimes quite yellow. It, it just varies depending on how much rosin there is in the material in your pot. So it, it's fun. It's real fun to play with that. Yeah, it is. You, just, you feel like you're performing magic. Um, this little ring is again pierced in that I cut that strip out of a sheet of metal and I did all that texturing with a hammer and with um, like a pin to create a line around, sharp pin, um, then bent it into shape, welded it shut, well, soldered it shut, um, bent it into a ring and that's actually a little commercial setting for that tiny stone because I don't think I have the eyesight anymore to make a setting that tiny and so then solder the setting on and set the stone and you have a ring and this one is a totally different method. This started out as an actual clipping off a cedar tree. Yeah, that's turned to silver. That's real alchemy, isn't it? Um, you put that cedar sprig in a flask and you pour an investment, which is like very fine plaster of Paris. You let it set, and then you put the whole thing fire into a kiln, and it melts out the wax base you've attached it to, and it burns out the cedar, and then you pour molten silver in, and it fills all the spaces that were left. And now I have a piece of cedar that's made of silver. And then I just, to highlight it, give it some sparkle, like, snowflakes on a tree, I set four little cubic zirconia, poor man's diamonds, on it. And uh, yeah, that's a fun thing to do too. I love watching that silver boil in a pot before you pour it. It's pure magic. It's like magic. And that would be such a special piece at Christmas time, right? Because of the, it just looks like a glisten, glistening Christmas piece tree. of <laughs> True. Christmas tree. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Dixie, that's amazing. This is pure art here. It's fun. The, the guild is full of people with more talent than I'll ever have. Some of them do really astonishing work, including Mary. Of course. And so uh, can you tell me what are, you did mention some of the materials that you use, but um, like how long did it take for you to accumulate all of these different tools to do your alchemy? <laughs> um, I don't have a kiln. I mean, I went somewhere else to do the casting, mm -hmm. but I started more than 25 years ago. And I started with, let me see, I had a couple of hammers and I had a saw, jeweler's saw. And I think that was really all, oh, and, and a little tiny soldering torch. And now I have 
a sort of a three-part bench that stretches across the whole end of our little workshop. I've got a section for beating on things, you know, heavy, sturdy bench. Then my sit-down, work-on-everything bench, and then a soldering station with some ventilation beside it. So 25 years of... I shouldn't look at a real grand catalog. <laughs> I shouldn't go near Mountain Gems in Burnaby. I always walk out, I say, I need one piece of silver. <laughs> walk out with a handful of stones, you know, and another tool, and Mary's nodding cap. That's what happens. You get hooked on this stuff and you can't stop. Well, I think it's healthy to be hooked on your passions. And when you have such beautiful uh, jewelry to show for all your, the fruits of your labor, right? So you get to wear originally crafted jewelry by your own imagination. Yeah. So that's, that's special. Really and, and I think that's more valuable than any store bought uh, or jewelry store bought uh, $1,000 diamonds. Who, who needs diamonds when you can create your own? But I inherited those. <laughs> those were my grandmother. On Unless you're inherited. <laughs> a piece of jewelry doesn't have to have gemstones. That's just a hunk of rock. It's That's a piece beautiful. of polished I was agate. Actually noticing that. And you know what I loved uh, when I was at the, uh, at the event on Mother's Day? I was looking at jewelry from the different members. They're different styles, right? You can see everyone's artistic, uh, uh, like little, uh, what do you call it? Um, I guess their forte, right? You can see their style and their creativity through their jewelry. Some are more about you know, how the stone turns out. Some are more about how the metal turns out, right? The metal work is more of a focus. So it's nice to see there's such a variety and there's so many unique pieces that that's why it's, it's hard to leave it in there without taking at least a few because they're so different. They're so different from what you see. And, uh, you know, it, I, I love wearing people's imagination on my body because I feel like it's, it's like wearing art. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. I, I, you know what, Mary's, Mary, I really like the way you think, lady. <laughs> I'm your host, Pega Ahani. This is Mary Painter, and we are signing out. Bye. Bye.